New to 3D printing and want to skip ahead a few levels? This is for you. 3D printing can be frustrating. Even with a new generation of printers, there's still a lot to learn. Sure, you can spend months watching YouTube tutorials or learn the hard way by trial and error. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the tips I wish somebody had told me. So let's start with the big one, making sure your model sticks to your build plate. Everything begins and ends with how well your print sticks to your bed. Modern printers and build plates have come a long way, but there's still a few tips to be aware of. And the first one's dead easy. Don't walk away straight away. Stick around for a few minutes to make sure that first layer goes down properly. Anything's gonna go wrong, it's likely to be this first layer. And if that's not stuck, your whole print's toast. So yeah, it's tempting to hit print and then walk away, but just stick around for those two minutes. Keeping your build plate clean is essential. The more greasy fingerprints you've got on it, the more likely your print is to fail. Every few prints, I give my plates a squirt of IPA, isopropanol, and uh, wipe them down with a microfiber cloth. But before larger prints, anything that goes near the edge of the bed, I take my plate to the kitchen. Washing up liquid is specifically designed to break down grease, so it's ideal for cleaning the muck off your build plates. Use plenty of liquid, hot water, and give it a good scrub with your microfiber cloth. Now will leave your build plate squeaky clean. You'll hear a lot of people talking about glue sticks when it comes to 3D printing. I don't use them often, just on really big prints, something that really fills the plate. And especially if it's a material that's more likely to warp as it cools. There are loads of expensive adhesion promoters out there, but I've never used anything more than the print stick. Cheaper, the better. And you don't need to apply it every print, it'll last for a while. There's more than one way to print a model. You can orient it in different ways, and this can make a big difference. It affects how quickly your model prints and also how much filament you use. Now, depending on where you've downloaded your model from, it may already be oriented properly the best way. But your slicer will have an auto-orient button. It's worth giving that a go. It might have a better idea. But sometimes it'll get it completely wrong, so don't blindly trust it. Plan here is to have as few supports as possible. Now, not every model will print without supports, but if you get your orientation right, you can minimize them. Orientation can affect the strength of your model as well. It's likely to break along the layer lines, not across them. So if you need your model to be strong, you might need to accept more supports than you'd like. It's all a compromise, but a good model will be designed with this in mind, and it's something to bear in mind when you're designing your own in the future. Speaking about designing your own, it's a good idea to learn some CAD. I'm not saying you need to be an expert in CAD, but if you want to get the most out of your printer, designing your own parts is just brilliant. Even having some basic skills will get you a long way, both in editing existing designs and creating your own from scratch. I've talked a bit more about this in this video, so go and have a look. I am by no means an expert in CAD, so I'll link to some CAD 101 uh, videos down in the description. When you first start printing, it's very easy to get caught up in all the different filaments you get. I must admit, it happened to me. But for most people, in most models, PLA is just fine. And I'm sure I'll get comments down below saying I'm completely wrong about that. PLA is a great middle of the road material which works for most things. It'll print on any printer. You don't need an enclosure. You don't need a hardened steel nozzle. It's even plant-based. Unless you specifically need the properties of another material like um, the flexibility of TPU or the UV resistance of ASA, just don't go there. PLA is the most popular material for 3D printing for a reason. Printing in something more complicated doesn't make you cool, so don't make things harder on yourself than you need to. Stick with PLA. But if you do go with something other than PLA, you need to think about storage and drying your material. If you follow my advice and stick with PLA, you can relax. It does absorb water from the air, but very, very slowly. So unless you plan on keeping your PLA for years and you live in a rainforest, you're going to be all right. Now, if you've got materials like TPU, uh, PETG or ASA, they are a bit more hydroscopic. They do pull more moisture from the air. But if you keep them in something like a, a plastic cereal box or a, a vacuum bag, if you put some silica gel in with them, they'll be OK for a long time. I've bought some rechargeable silica gel. It just means that once it's absorbed all it's going to absorb, you can stick it in the oven and dry it out so you can use it again. In my, my tubs, I've got this print at the bottom which holds quite a bit of silica gel and also a humidity gauge at the front so you can keep an eye on things. I'll put links to all of this in the description down below, by the way. Moving on, let's talk about nozzles. They come in a range of sizes, but your machine will usually come with a 0.4mm. Now, I've added to my collection. I've got a 0.2mm, which is great for models with very fine detail in. The smaller the nozzle, the longer your print will take and if you print with something like a 0.6 or a 0.8 the layer lines are going to be more obvious but if you're just printing something like a gridfinity bin you can just crank it out quicker and you don't really mind about that quality and if you don't know what gridfinity is that's up in this video as well and as prints tend to break along the layer lines if you're printing bigger layers you've got fewer lines you've got a stronger print Switching between them depends on your printer, but it's never particularly difficult. Now, I've mentioned strength of your models a few times, so let's talk about walls versus infill. It's easy to assume that if you put more infill, more stuff inside your model, it's going to be stronger, but that's not always the case. In fact, adding more walls and keeping the infill the same, or even lowering it, 
will make your model stronger and use less filament. So if you need strength, before you start cranking up that infill percentage, just add another wall or two. You'll feel the difference. Now, when you get the bug, you will want to print as much as you can, but it's quite hard to do that if the other people in the house are moaning about the noise, and these things can be a bit noisy. I'm not going to talk about it now because I made another video on this topic, but click up here or down in the description. I've talked about how I use foam and paving slabs to keep things quiet. I'm not going to talk about tools in any great depth in this video, but I will mention this one. This is a deburring tool. It is ideal for getting rid of elephant's foot or brims or anything like that. Uh, and it's so much safer than using a knife, much quicker too. And if there's a hole in your print, it's just a smidge too small. You can do a little twizzle with this as well. If you've learned anything in this video, please click that like button. It really helps out. And if you've got any tips that you think people new to the hobby should know, drop them down in the comments. And if you'd like to see more 3D printing content from me, hit that subscribe button. There is more coming. But for now, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Bye.